Hello, I'm Annie Sloan, and welcome back to my colour series. I'm going to be talking today about adding white. It's a huge subject, and it may not be something that you've really thought about that much. So when I first made my colours, I made them really strong mainly strong not all of them there are some pale ones but i've tended to make them stronger you can always add white and make it color lighter there's only one way to make a color lighter some people have asked me if i add water to it will it be lighter no the color stays the same it's just thinner that's all but it, it still stays the same color when i first uh, started um, with my paints uh, I realised that some people hadn't quite realised that having this colour could make that colour. And all it is, is steps with a little bit extra white, adding white to make this colour. And so it goes on with all the other colours. Um, I've got one here. This is the blue. This is my Aubusson blue. And there it's quite dark. A little bit more white, bit more white, bit more white, and to there. You could, of course, get lighter and lighter. So this is how I saw the colour being used. You could maybe paint your whole piece in that dark colour and perhaps do a line or do an edging in the lighter colour or vice versa. You could have this piece of, um, the, the, the main piece of the furniture in this colour, but having a line in that, the moulding or... Um, the knob or the drawer and so the two colors are together but it's easily done so all you need is two pots of color um, the other thing that I would do is that to get different blues um, you could do so my duck egg blue is quite a greeny blue and so it's a different idea that you've already you've got a slightly pale color already but you get to something like that which is really very very soft um, I've later turned this colour into a wall colour. So this is now Pemberley Blue. Um, so you'll see it here somewhere. I think it's that one there. So it's Pemberley Blue. It's just duck egg blue with white in it. And so it goes on with other colours. There's Greek Blue. And you've got this lovely soft colour from the Greek Blue. So that's quite strong, but that's really quite soft. So you could have everything in the room that colour, but one or two pieces, maybe you paint a vase or you do a chair in that. So that's the way you use it, just by adding um, there's a Louis blue. They're all different blues. So that's a warm reddish blue, that's a cooler mid blue, and that's the greener blue, and so it goes on the greener blue and then the very deep blue. And this, of course, is Prussian blue in real artist colours. Now, that one, I think, all the blues, everyone is much more used to thinking a dark blue, you add white, and it makes pale blue. The one that most people are quite amazed about is Primer Red, to which you add white, and you get this. So that's Primer Red, and you might think, oh, gosh, really strong colour, lovely but I don't know if I can use that. Add some white and look what you get. These gorgeous, gorgeous pinks. Earthy, earthy pinks. So they are sort of brownish pinks. So it's just a matter of using, I'll go to mix some for you so you can see. Um, you start off with some primer red. Beautiful red, red color. The colour of earth, it's a sort of what you would call sienna red or sienna brown, um, burnt sienna. Um, they're the colours from um, the uh, Renaissance and they were these earthy colours um, from Italy originally. Or goes back even further, they're ancient colours because they were actually earth colours. Dig them up from the earth. Now, here is some old white and now... Let's mix in whoops, a little bit of primer red and you've got this delicious, beautiful, soft pink. Now it's a pink, but it's not a pink that you would think, oh, it's a bit too girly, couldn't live with that. 
Um, both men and women would find it too childish, but that is actually a very sophisticated pink, a really beautiful pink. Um, and you could make it slightly more red. Or you get that, you just put some in there, there we are. Now these colours are made with no black. So that really shows up when you put white into it. If there was black in there and I mixed the white in with it, that would become very greyed. It would become immediately obvious and it doesn't have it there. You can't see any of it. Um, my whites have got, old white has got some, um, a sort of a deep, dirty brown, a sort of umber colour. And there we are. So a very, um, there's the white and there's the one, just a tiny bit of pink in it or rather a tiny bit of primer red in it. For me, this is magical. And you see it all over the world. So you see it in very grand things. You see it in um, houses which have got lots of gilding with it. So you have this earth color. So it goes beautifully, beautifully with gold. You'll see it in Venice. So the old palaces in Venice. You'll see it on peasant doors and houses in, in Spain from hundreds of years ago, you'll see it in uh, Mexico, Africa, India, um, everywhere, this color, which is this wonderful earthy color, and it goes everywhere. So that is the aspect of adding white, which is always a surprise. So that's the primer. The Scandinavian pink, which is a similar earthy pink with the white, so what I've tried to do with all of my colours is have it so that I know when you add white, which will give you the real colour, you'll bring out and un you make you understand what the real colour is, um, you'll get everything covered. You'll get a cool, a warm, um, a pale. That's everything is in there. So people ask me all the time, which white should I use to make my colours lighter? I would say pure is great because it's got it's very clean. It will um, make your colours quite clean looking. So if you've got a, a blue, you'll get a very clean blue, which can be perfect. If you're wanting something with a little bit more gravitas, a little bit more age or sophistication, I would use old white. So something modern and clean and perhaps young. Uh, then perhaps use pure for anything which is to give it that gravitas than old white. Original can be used, but just remember it's got yellow in it. It's got a, a, it's not a yellow, but it has got yellow in it. And so you will find that if you add it to blue, you're going to slightly yellow it and that will make it slightly green. So I would stick with pure um, or old white unless you know that you want some yellow. So doing this with one colour, one pot of paint can do everything in the room but it will look like you didn't use, you'd think you'd use lots and lots of different tones, darker and lighter. So it's a foolproof method to make it work. You're not going to go wrong because you know I know people are scared, oh will it, will it clash? Well it won't clash because it's the same colour just lightened or darkened. So it's a foolproof method. So another great trick with this is the way you can make lots of colour. So if you've used already half a tin of colour and you've got a tin lying around, what can you do? Buy a tin of white or a small thing of white and then start mixing and you've got a whole new load of colours that you can use in your home. The next thing I want to talk about is how this developed, because it's been quite interesting. I started in my shop using this and explaining to people how things were lightened and darkened and all the rest of it, the foolproof method. method. Um, and so first of all, I made one of these, and then I think that then got to another one where we did it in a different way, same thing, but different. Um, so these are over the years, different ones. They were getting bigger because I added more colour, um, different ones, um, being a bit more measured this time. So this was a particular um, amounts. 
But in fact, it's really up to you. So actually, it's a good point to talk about. So there's Antoinette. And someone would say, well, what if I want to do that in my house? Is that the colour I should do? So that'll be pure colour, one part white, two part white, three part white, four part white, whatever it was. I can't remember the actual mixture. But I'd say, no, you can't do that because it might work beautifully here in, your, in the, my shop. But when you go home, you might find that that looks dead. It might be that this is the mixture you need for that piece of furniture in that room. So it, there is no way for you to know ahead of time until you use it yourself. And then eventually we got all that. And then eventually we've brought out this. And I think every one of my stockists has one of these. And it's very useful. So what I've done here, it's even more um, developed slightly developed in here but more developed here so that's the color that's one to one one to 16 and then just a, that's the white and under here are all the colors that we think really work with emperor's silk so they're colors that will be a neutral with you for you neutral such as obeson blue i know blue you may not think that is a neutral but it's a sort of neutral because it's very deep uh, French linen and country grey, those are neutrals that go well. I'm not going to, I didn't add whites because, I mean, it's too much. Um, but country grey, French linen and Aubusson blue. And here's some colours that work very well. Old violet, duck egg blue, olive and chateau grey. They can be things like maybe a lamp in the room, a lamp shade in the room, a chair in the room or a line. So you could have that piece of furniture, but the drawer could be painted in Chateau Grey, could look very smart, or just the edge in Chateau Grey. And so we have um, pots, litre pots, or, uh, and then we also have smaller pots, and then you can do the line in that. And also we have our fabrics, and those fabrics work very well with these two. And so it goes on throughout the whole book. That's a nice one, and that works with that, the orange and the yellow. So this book you will find in all my stockists' shops and they are also all trained in colour and they will be able to help you with your colour. Uh, that's the whole idea that they can, you can talk to people about what you should paint your piece of furniture or your wall or, um, or the whole room 